So, all right, clip launcher, what's the deal? The deal is that in Ableton, I hated it. For the first three years in Bitwig, I hated it. Now, it's actually kind of cool. And I'll tell you why. In Ableton, whenever you have audio clips, you're kind of confined to whatever it is within it. And you can't really, you can edit it, you can change the warping and stuff, but you can't do multiple like cutting and pasting or, or drag in different audio clips from there. What do I mean by that? Well, if you have an audio track within Bitwig and the clip launcher and you just double click to make a clip like this, you can put any kind of audio in here and it can be completely unique. So if I were to grab this, and which is a snare, I guess, and I were to grab this, even though these are different audio clips, they can still, audio events, they can still fit within the audio clip. And not only that, but if I were to take this, I can actually edit these and duplicate and paste and change the individual warp modes all in between without anything else being affected. So that means that I can construct loops and make them unique without having to paste them on the timeline up to a point. You can go much further with Bitwig, let's say that. Add that on top of things like operators, where let's say you wanted to click on this and do repeats. So you go like this, you can see that these are starting to repeat now. You can push them over to the side or just do drills or whatever. The editing capabilities from this makes the clip launcher much more flexible in that you're not just confined to like, you know, you would normally only be able to put one snare on here and you would have to time the snare out to repeat once every four bars or so. You don't have to do that on this. You can literally just make these clips however you want them to without them having to re-trigger at a certain piece of time or you can you know, edit this to where it can be this long and you can make it repeat here or you can edit it to be here and be completely unique. If you wanted to have something that had a bunch of variation, you don't have to like make a bunch of duplicate clips and then change the each individual ones, which you can still do excuse me, but this is just so much more flexible. And that's why I decided to come back to the clip launcher and give it another try. So this video is heavily inspired by a lot of Ceruto's compositions. Now, I don't want to say that this is going to teach you how to make music like Ceruto because Ceruto is him and you, you know what I mean? He's an individual that you can't and shouldn't try to copy. But something I love about his compositions is that there's always some kind of like wonky baseline then there's some kind of wonky chord progression, then there's some other kind of wonky bass line that has some kind of like rising percussive lead, and then it just kind of like flows and has like a bunch of different beats, but they all kind of seem like they're together in one single composition as a whole. And I'm not saying that this is how he does it. In fact, he doesn't because he streams every once in a while on Twitch, which you should totally check out. But this is a way that you can kind of approach a similar thing. The biggest fear that I had with this in the first place was the transitions and the, you know, like little momentary cutting and pasting effects, you know, like stutters or doing resampling or stuff. And the truth of the matter is that if you can kind of just put it to the side until the arrangement is sketched out and then go back and do that and then make some other stuff unique, it actually doesn't seem that bad. And it keeps you in the habit of the writing process, which is just as fun. My two favorite things of making music are the arrangement when I actually know what I want to do, like when it's actually working out, and then the micro editing, especially in IDM or so with like glitch music and stuff. And I will say that even though you can do like glitch-esque things on here, um, I do think that it's still more conducive to use the timeline in specific use cases because of how much control that kind of music demands. But anyways, I know that I haven't played any sounds yet, but let me just kind of quickly walk you through what I did and hopefully you will kind of see like how I put this together. So let's go ahead and just start with the drums. Um, the only other thing that I had the problem with from before was I don't really like using the drum rack and lo and behold, because of hybrid clips, you can actually not have to use the hybrid track if you want to. You can just pull an audio clip in here and make whatever kind of beats you want. But for this particular case, I went and sound designed these sounds, which is a kick and then a bunch of different snares and claps. So I made some hi-hats and some percussion. This is a percussive generator and I just kind of went and double clicked on this and did some editing to create cool little loops. This is just a shaker right here. And then this is a hat. 
this is the percussive generator, but I kind of kept it as opposed to turned it off because it's still useful. So if I just push one button, you've seen me do this before if you've been to my channel, but I just do this. I'm just holding one note and it creates stuff for me. And this was the only thing that I used on the timeline. So everything else was pretty much done within here, but I dragged out this little clip like this, and then I dragged this into here and started doing the cutting and pasting and stuff. But hopefully you can kind of see how that workflow connection was made. But that's pretty much it for the drums. But let's just go ahead and uh, play some of these clips together and you'll see how you can create a bunch of different variations. Dope. So even just from playing a couple of clips, there was so much different variation and movement in between that was happening. And you start to add in like your breaths and your spaces in the timeline where like you pull stuff out and create more uh, space to enhance the rhythm. But even just as a means of creating something that's kind of bouncy, right? Like I was just kind of moving these clips on the fly. You can record this on the fly if you want to, or like move the clips out in any arrangement that you want to. But you're pretty much just creating building blocks here to have a lot of fun. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and hit play again and we're going to introduce some bass lines. Okay, so even though this wasn't mixed, even though, you know, it wasn't well done together, it was still a lot of fun to do, to just play with, right? And essentially something that you can do is, I guess, just chop up a bunch of clips or throw everything in your sample pack together and play with that in a means to like enjoy it. But if you are the one that's curating these yourself, let's say you have trouble with bass lines, well, you just write out a bunch of different bass lines in MIDI and audio and do all the resampling and sound design stuff, but then drag it in as a loop. Well, then you're just launching it and you are auditioning a bunch of different stuff 
but it's easy because it's on this kind of grid because you don't have to move it into the timeline or move it out of the way or create a duplicate. You can just say, nope, just play this one. Nope, just play this one. Nope, just play this one. And that to me has been a lot of fun to just explore. Now, of course, there's a bunch of other options. There's randomization that you can introduce to here. There's seeded randomization. There's the operators. There's the chance. There's the fold to uh, or expand different takes in order to create new stuff. But the biggest takeaway for me was that this is a great way to just start writing a bunch of different ideas in compartmentalization or like in 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 parts, I guess, of, hey, I've got this base, so let's write a bunch of baselines with it and see if any of them are cool. And you kind of like pick one thing, which to me is the groove. You've got a bunch of different grooves to kind of ride around, and then you can kind of just see if anything lines up. And it doesn't have to be hip hop. This can be, you know, dubstep or rhythm or I guess anything else of the sort, but it's just cool and a lot of fun to, to play that game. Because uh, that's really what that felt like to me was just trying to play a game and see what kind of lines up and sounds interesting together. So hopefully this was informative to you and hopefully the workflow approach is kind of like a little more clear. Of course, once everything is said and done, then you just drag everything out and you just start arranging it in a way that you want to do it chronologically. And when you want to add in your unique pieces, then you cut stuff up and add your resampling or you add in your neuro base fills or you add in your transitions, right? But if you've got beats that flow together nicely already, then all of the transitions and stuff that you have are almost like unnecessary because all the beats just are playing different parts, right? You're just moving from one part to another. And if the flow is already there, then it's just, you know, icing on the cake. So anyways, I hope that was informative to you all. Be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to check out my bases and stuff, then check out Eternum uh, at alchemy.com. And then right below are all my socials now in one single link. So that way I don't have to be like, follow this, follow this, follow this. You can just see everything that you might want to check out. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to Saruta for being so inspiring for making this video happen. And if he sees this, then hopefully he's inspired to maybe try out Session View or try out Bitwig as well. Uh, not to call him out or anything, but yeah. Anywho, much love to you all, and I will see you in the next one.